Polly. Hey, hey, you have headphones on. I have head fo- my headphones on. <laughs> Hi, welcome to Taco Bell. Can I take your enchilada? Uh, sorry. We uh, yeah, here. I'd like a number three, please. Uh, could you go extra heavy on a hot sauce? And uh, let me get those crispy, uh, what do they call them things? Uh, they're like a dessert thing that you have afterwards. Um, I can't think of them. Put like seven of those in there for me. And uh, yeah, we'll call that a day. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Polly, T, good to see you. Good to see you too, man. It's incredible this new technology the kids have. Are you, are you, are you in uh, you're in Florida right now? I'm, I'm I am in Florida. See the trees. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, this is Polly Lit. Uh, Polly is playing college, and here comes Rusty. I'm uh, Tyler Russell, director of the movie, and uh, Polly. It's good to see you. You're looking good. Your hair's a little bit longer. Than, I know. Uh, I know. It's uh, than than in. Uh, Rusty, it's been a while. Yeah, so Paul, you want to you want to tell me a little bit about yourself and about college in the in the movie? Well, I think college. Uh, you know, when I when I uh, when you first sent me the script and I immediately uh, read it, I uh, really kind of such a uh, a a true. Um, you know, he he kind of sees the best in everyone. This this kid, college, and and uh, I think that's very true as far as uh, Dickie is concerned. And uh, he he sees all these, you know, really, you know, the real qualities that that go down to his heart. And he he understands that, you know, the backstory of it. I I think is that Dickie, you know, sort of helped him along the way. Uh, cause I don't know if college really has, uh, a family to go home to and, uh, Dickie is that family for him. Uh, so I think when he comes back to the park and he sees that it's just gone, uh, he really wants to fix that for a family member. And that is Dickie. Exactly. And so you're kind of best friends, right? Oh yeah. We're best buddies. <laughs> and which is funny, uh, we are best buddies now. Currently, I know. <laughs> we talk all the time. Always together. We're we're always <laughs> together. We're 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 t- we either talking about the Mets, uh, you know, or we're talking about maybe it's football season. We're talking about the Vikings, whatever it may be. We're always we're always chatting it up. <laughs> Wait, who's your team? I'm a Mets and a Vikings fan. So uh, Mets for baseball, Vikings for football. Who's Bruce? And who's Bruce's teams? I guess Bruce is all you know. He's kind of uh, all Atlanta. You know, he like he does like his Braves, and and uh, he 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 gives me a lot of insight. You know, because Colonel Bruce, if you don't know, can predict the future. <laughs> so uh, whenever I was like, I was like, so you know, Colonel, I, I think we're going. We're, we were going to the World Series. Everything's good. He goes to me. He literally he 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 texts me that moment and he was like you're not going to win the world series but it's <laughs> it's great that you went and i was like come on man you really have to do that to me damn yeah so he you was think bruce like, did it you think he's the one that kind of called it off yeah i mean it could be it could be <sighs> colonel bruce hampton uh yeah. tell the commissioner it could it could be him it's kind of like back back to the future <laughs> correct <laughs> which I, I wouldn't be surprised at all if, if he was really from the future but anyway colonel bruce i don't yeah. know if he's from the future if he's from the past if he's from the present i just know he he is who he is <laughs> and uh you know well, i i enjoy every single uh moment with him what was it like working with him oh it was just uh uh kind of a at first i i, I was like what is happening what world am I in right now? Am I in, where, where am I? And I learned to like love and appreciate him, you know? And, and from the, from the get go, I, I didn't even know who, he, who he was. And I know that surprises a lot of people now, but when you first called me and you're like, Oh, this movie, Colonel Bruce. And I was like, Oh, that's nice. Who's Colonel Bruce. And you like slapped me upside the head and you were like, you don't know who Colonel Bruce is. Uh, and, uh, slowly but surely, uh, every single day, 
that I, I get to know him, I, I know Colonel Bruce. Mm-hmm. And uh, I understand um, the magic that he has. <laughs> do, you, do you have a story you want to share from set? Oh, with Colonel Bruce? Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, I, I, did I ever tell you that, you know, Colonel's one of his favorite stories when we were in Mobile. You know, we after set, we used to go, uh, we used to go to dinner. We either went to, depending on when we got off work, we'd go to, uh, what's that, the bike shop downtown yeah, Mobile. Because yeah, it, it was open until like 6 a.m. or whatever. <laughs> so we would we would get off and we'd, we'd go there. But a couple times we got off early and we'd go to the restaurant next door to the hotel. I forget what it was, but it was like, you know, a diner-ish style place. And we, we would go in and it, it just kind of summed up our, our whole bit in Mobile. We would go in and the first thing was we looked and we, we walk into this restaurant. Nobody's in the restaurant. Every other light is on in the restaurant. There's one waitress working in the whole entire restaurant. So, you know, Colonel and I look at each other and we go, ah, it's, you know, what is it? We'll sit down. We'll sit at a lit table. So, you know, we picked, <laughs> we picked one of the tables that had a light, thankfully. And, and we, 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 we got the menus and we're looking and Colonel Bruce being Colonel Bruce, he goes, uh, turn to page three and look at this salad, what it has on it. And I'm reading and uh, and I say, it has avocados on it. I see, A-L, avocados. So he, he loved that. And But his, probably his favorite part of the experience was he ordered four things. And every single time the waitress came back and said, we're out of that. <laughs> oh, I bet he got so he, he ordered a turkey sandwich. We're out of turkey. Whoa. You know, so uh, I'll tell you one thing about Colonel is he enjoys every single moment of life. So uh, where most people would have been upset or left, he just fa- he just started laughing, yep. you know, just just <laughs> craziness. And he loves to eat too, so I'm sure that had to he, he be does, pretty hard. He does like to um, enjoy food wherever I am in the country, and I and Colonel and I happen to be in the same place. He's always like, "Oh, I'm going to take you to the best Chinese place here. I'm going to take you to the best Italian place here, Cuban place." I was like, wow, you're really, uh, you know your stuff. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, so, so overall, what was it like being on set with everybody? You had Fred Willard and Joey and uh, it was, Lance and everybody on there. It was uh, just a really neat experience. You know, unlike uh, uh, some of the sets that you can be on, It's uh, this was a really fun set. You know, everybody enjoyed what they were doing. Uh, everybody knew what they were doing, knew what they were supposed to do. They were on the ball. I mean, Lance, I had a great time, you know, because we had a few of those bar scenes together where it was just him and I. And uh, it was fun. You know, funny enough, Lance um, had the same agent as I 30 years ago. So it was, it was 20 <laughs> years ago. It was it was funny. He he came up to me. He said, "Oh, I saw you. You've been at Innovative for 15 years or 14 years." And and I was like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." And and we started chatting it up about that. And just a really really cool environment to be at. Awesome. Uh, you want to tell me about Dickie's police car? You had some experiences uh, with the police car. During what the didn't I? Movie. What didn't I experience with that? Whether I was driving it, falling over it, falling <laughs> yeah. on it, uh, uh, breaking it. Remember the time we were at the police station and oh, I pulled up I and it started smoking, and I was like, "Hey guys, I don't know much about cars, but this thing is having black smoke come out of it. I'm probably gonna hightail out of here and." <laughs> not do this scene anymore uh and then the uh then the oh god how about that poor old lady so you know when when you pull up to mobile and there's that uh the overhang and this woman had uh had you you had asked her to use her car uh for the scene 
and it was like a brand brand spanking new ride, like really brand new. <laughs> and um, I was driving the police car, uh, and it's the scene where you know the last final race, and we pull up and we skid, you know, on there. And this woman pulls me aside, and she's like, "Please, please don't hit my car." And I was like, "Yeah, sure, no problem. I, I, no problem. I, I have my license. I, I know how to drive and press the brake." Uh, I didn't realize though that that particular car, like, had no brakes on it. I mean, <laughs> you guys told me you were like, "Yeah, you should just be careful about the brakes." And I was like, "Guys, I think man, it was hit the brakes thirty feet before where you're going to land." That's <laughs> yeah. That could be it. That could be it. Hit the brakes thirty feet before yeah. you land. That could be. That has a ring to it. So it, it probably was ingrained in there somewhere. Because I remember you came up to me about five times, maybe more than that, and you were like, "Hey, hey, Tyler, I don't know how I feel about this. Uh, I don't want to hit this lady's car." I'm like, no, you're gonna be great. You're gonna do great. You yeah, driven yeah, a car yeah. before. Just... You've driven a 1967, you know, beat down, no brakes police car before. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, and then when you get out <laughs> out of the car, naturally you want to slip and fall every single time. I think I'm slipping and falling more in this movie than I ever have in my whole life. Yeah, yeah, you, you did fall a lot. I did, uh, yeah, Good I did. Good for the did. blooper reel, for sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, let's, <laughs> so this is kind of, this is a little different question, but I have to ask it. Uh, so you played uh, uh Spriddle in the Wachowski Brothers Speed Racer movie. I, yes. So, uh, it, it kind of feel if people don't know who he is, can you just say real quick who is who's Spriddle? So, uh, so it's Speed Racer's younger brother, and uh, Spriddle's kind of this. Um, he's this mischievous, nosy little brother that. Everybody, um, I'm sure, who has a little brother has had and experienced in the past uh, where, you know, they just want to be with their brother 24-7. Uh, they want to know what he's doing. They want to be in. And, they're, and, you know, Spritel looks out for speed in a lot of ways. And he made, especially in the film with Royalton, he, he knew kind of what he was trying to do and where he was trying to go. And it just so happens that he um, has a best friend and his best friend happens to be named Chim Chim. Yes. And uh, and that's where we're going with this. This he's this a chimpanzee. You, so Spr- Spritel has Chim Chim, right? Yep. So here's the question: Who would win in rock paper scissors? Chim Chim from Speed Racer or Bruce Hampton from Here Comes Rusty? Oh, that <laughs> that is a tough one, my man. Let me just tell you, Willie and Kenzie were very, very intelligent. Um, I. I Ooh, that's a tough one. It depends which Colonel Bruce it is. If it's Colonel Bruce from the past, present, or future, what <laughs> Colonel Bruce it is. If it's Colonel Bruce in Mobile, if it's Colonel Bruce in Savannah, I don't know. A lot's going to depend. What time of the year is it? Where's the moon? What signs are happening? You know, that that factors in everything with Colonel Bruce. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Where the sun sets, where, where it was. I think he position? already knows, though. He does. I think you're right. But who so wins? Fuck, maybe, who wins? maybe you're right. You just hit the nail on the head. He knows I'm going Colonel Bruce for 300, John. For three. <laughs> yeah, is that your final answer? Oh yes. man. One actor in time, or, or actress, or who? Uh, who would you work with? Who, who's who's like the biggest one? Who would? Who, who are you dying who, to work with? Who would I love to work yeah, with? Absolutely. You know, it's 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 unfortunate that it'll never happen. But I would have loved to have worked with Frank Sinatra. He was an idol of mine since I was a little kid. Oh, we lost you, Polly. Oh, uh, can you hear me now? Oh yeah. Yeah yeah. I like that picture, by the way. That was nice. That looked. Oh like my Polly. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so um, Frank Sinatra. Going back, Frank Sinatra. Um, he. Uh, I grew up listening to him. I grew up watching all of his films. And, uh, unfortunately that, that won't happen. Um, but it, it, w- it would be definitely, uh, a, a, a cool one to have, uh, done a little, uh, song and a little soft shoe with them in one of the films. Cool. 
Uh, what's a what's a perfect afternoon look like for Polly Lit? Hmm. For me, I like to. Uh, I'm I'm a I'm a get up early. I hit the gym. Come home. Have my uh, have my protein shake. Have my egg whites. Maybe hit a little golf, or you know, later in the morning, uh, get a couple. Drive a couple of balls. Maybe. Um, Maybe come home, hit the beach. You never know, uh, and just kind of chill. Read, read a book. I'm, I'm a big guy. I, I like big to Nancy uh, Drew reader. <laughs> big Nancy Drew. Yes, Got I do it. love Nancy Drew. Yep. <laughs> How'd you know? I, I mean, I you saw took you a read it every day. It was like, That's what's in this box? Uh, Nancy Drew. <laughs> it's my Nancy Drew collection. I travel with it. Now you know why I tend to drive everywhere because I have to have all my Nancy Drew books with me. <laughs> so, Polly. Yes. <laughs> Tyler. If you had to choose between two people, who Ooh. would you choose? Polly D or Polly Shore? Do none of them because they both spell <laughs> their name with a Y. I'm an IE guy. <laughs> They both Pauly spells it with Pauly Shore spells it with a Y and Pauly D spells it with a Y. I'm like, come on, guys, it's I E. So, so if your name is spelled with a Y at the end, you just instantly hate those people. No. Nah. So thank goodness my <laughs> no. my Y is like no, after the first no, letter. No, it's just Good. for for those partic- two particular people. Uh, I'd rather choose Pauly Walnuts. Okay. The mobster. <laughs> okay. I pick third, Polly Walnuts. <laughs> Final answer. Uh, what are people's reactions when they hear you're from New Jersey? Uh, <laughs> uh, it, it depends where I'm at in the country. Um, most of the time, you know, they, they, when I'm down in New Orleans, they, uh, it, it tends to not be a problem because some, some of the times um, – the New Orleans accent isn't so far off as the Jersey accent, so it's not too bad. Usually, when I'm at restaurants and I I say water, you know, I order water. They they they're like, what? I'm like, you know, water, the stuff that comes in a glass that you drink. <laughs> um, so uh, you know, for the most part, where I am in Florida, it's a bunch of retirees who are from the northeastern area, so I feel at home. Um, what's the weirdest, yeah. what's the weirdest thing somebody said to you about New Jersey? Yeah. I, geez, I don't, I don't know. I mean, usually it's, it's somebody from, you know, Long Island or something like that. And we, we get into the whole rivalry of it all, but <laughs> that's pretty much it. I mean, nobody, nobody messes with Jersey. Nobody's like, you, know, you can't eat here. You gotta get yeah. out of here. No, because you know what happens in Jersey. We just get a baseball bat and we take care of business for everything, you know? <laughs> okay. Uh, so, Polly, what do you love the most about what you do, acting and producing and everything in the film industry that you do? You know, I we're in an industry that um, – I, I I talk to a bunch of people and I, I, I make a joke. I say, you know, we're not curing cancer. Uh, we're not saving people's lives. But what we do have is we have the ability to change the perception of someone and the way someone perceives something uh, for the betterment, possibly, of society. Uh and no other industry can do that within an hour to an hour and a half. So it's a very unique uh, thing, and it, and it should be treated as a privilege and an honor. And uh, shouldn't be taken so god darn serious. <laughs> I get to have, we get to have a lot of fun. We get to create. And uh, not a lot of people can say that. So we're very lucky. Very true. Very true, Polly. So, uh, that being said, why should people go see Here Comes Rusty? I think they should see it to have a fun, to have a little fun, to see the wonderful uh, comedic chops that 
one that Colonel Bruce has. Colonel Bruce is just hilarious in the movie. <laughs> I mean, come on. Uh, and to hear some great music. I mean, you only have some of the best musicians out there in the film. Just one or two or three or four of them, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and and you get to see uh, a heartfelt film that has a lot of heart to it, you know, which is... Uh, which is uh, not too often seen in in today's cinema, and it's really nice to uh, that you guys wrote a a film that has a lot of heart with Dicky, and he has a lot of heart in him. 